Hi guys, some of you may have built our Pico piano. Or you might have done the really simple version with just a few resistors twisted together. This video is not about coding, so you don't need to know how to code. We're just going to show you how to grab the code and get it up and running on your particular setup. And how to customise it um, to adapt to your particular setup. And we're going to be showing you how to use the MicroPython code on a Raspberry Pi Pico and the CircuitPython code on um, the MakerPi Pico um, by Cytron Technologies. And we'll be using its onboard Raspberry Pi Pico and its onboard speaker, which will be really exciting. You can also use this um, to get it working and hooked up to a MIDI device. And we have another video showing you guys how to do that. Um, incidentally, if you want to make one of these um, keyboard boards, then we have a video showing you guys how to manufacture these, as well as some other options that you may have as well. We also have another video on the super simple version, which just includes a few resistors, um, a speaker and your microcontroller board. No soldering, no breadboard, anyone can make it. So do check that out as well if you're interested. I know a lot of you guys will be on a different setup. So Windows, Mac and other Linux distributions. So just adapt what we're doing to your particular setup. Let's start by getting the code. Now, if you already know how to do this, feel free to skip ahead. Personally, when I watch a tutorial video and someone misses a step, I get very lost, so I don't want to leave anyone behind. Here we are at github.com forward slash gagalabs forward slash pico piano. First, we need to press this green download button. And then press download zip. Double tap this. Select all of these and extract the files. Now we need to navigate to where we want to save these files. I'm going to put mine on my desktop and I'm going to open it and then I'm going to press extract and it's here. Another way to do this is using git clone. So if I to open up the shell and then I'm going to navigate to where I want to put it. So in my case desktop, so the CD desktop. I go here and I press download code like she did. Instead of downloading the zip, I just click here to copy this link here. And then I go git clone and then I paste the link and it's um, cloned so you can see on my desktop here it's just been added do I click on it and it's got everything in here now we've got all our files we need on our computer it's time to move them onto our microcontroller there's many ways you can do this but I'm using Thonny I've got this files view open here to get that you go views and then you tick files here. I've already selected my interpreter, which is my MicroPython device. And this bottom window here is what's on my MicroPython device, which is nothing. Top window is what's on my computer. I've navigated um, to my Pico Piano folder. So mine was in HomePie desktop Pico Piano. And what I need to put onto my MicroPython device is notesutil.py and Pico Piano MicroPython.py. I'll put notesutils on first. So I right click that, then go upload to. And the same again with Pico Piano MicroPython. Right click, upload to. Great, now our files are on our MicroPython microcontroller. But what if you want to put them on a CircuitPython device? As most of you probably already know, when you plug in your CircuitPython device, it comes up down here. So I'm just going to double click on that. There's nothing in there. And then I'm also going to double click on my Pico Piano folder. So I need to transfer noutils.py and Pico Piano circuitpython.py. I copy them, right click, paste. And now our files are on our CircuitPython device. We just opened our files in Sony and we've got noutils here. You don't have to know anything about how this code works or what it is. It just needs to be on your microcontroller. Incidentally, if you do want to see the logic behind this and how it was made, We've got a video on that, link should be in the description. So now we're just going to talk you through the alterations you need to make to your code so that it fits with your unique keyboard setup, because everyone's is going to be different. We'll start by showing you the alterations to the MicroPython code. If you're doing the CircuitPython code, then we'd recommend to watch this section because the processes are so similar um, and we're not going to be repeating certain things. So let's start with line five. We're setting the Pro Pin, which is this pin here that you touch notes with. And I've set mine to GPIO pin 26. This here is my circuit diagram. And you can see my analog pin, my probe, is connected to GPIO pin 26, which is this pin on my Raspberry Pi Pico. But yours may not be, so change that to your probe pin. Next is the speaker pin. On my circuit diagram, my positive side of my speaker is connected to here, which is GPIO pin 2. My speaker is connected to GPIO pin 2, but again, 
change that to your GPI open that your speaker's connected to. Right, line 10. For this, we need to go to the bottom of the code, line 41, and check its loaded list, comma, true. When you probably download the code, it'll be something like this, or comma, false. Um, and you just need to change that to comma, true. So your bottom line should look something like this. Now we can get on with line 10. So that's as soon as you run the program, you could see down here in the shelf that the number's printing out every second. Um, this program is not touching anything right now. And you need to choose the highest one you see there and add a bit more onto that. So I've seen 400. So I'm going to go with 500. So I'll change this 2000 here to 500. This is just when a program runs, we tell it if the pro value is less than 500 don't play a sound. Now, if you don't want to use one of the sets of notes that we already have in the code, then you can create your own one. So I'll just create a one called custom. So I'll just um, show you guys how we can do this. So we'll follow the same pattern with a list with mini lists inside. And we've got one, two, three, four, five different notes that we can have. So I'll do five of these mini lists. So I'll start with my first list, which is going to be my first, first note. So I'll just put my probe on my first note here. We can see our voltage readings coming up. So I've not seen it go over 7,700. So I'll just go with 8,000 just to be on the safe side. For my notes, I'm just going to choose a pentatonic scale. A pentatonic is just a set of notes that sound pretty good together. Um, which is really good for if you're not musical because you can play the notes in any order without it sounding too terrible and um, so that's really useful. So I'm going to do D major pentatonic, so the first note there is D4. Um, again, these can be any notes you like, there are no rules. This is just what I'm choosing to do. Second note, touch the probe. I'm not seeing any value over 12,500, so I'll just go 13,000 just to be on the safe side. So 13,000. And the note, E4. Third note, touch the probe. I've not seen any values over 18,500, so just to be on the safe side, I'll just go 19,000. Then my note, F sharp. Four. Fourth note, touch the probe. I've not seen any values over 30,000, so that's probably a safe bet to go, but 30,000. And then this note, I'm just going to go for A4. And my final note, note 5, touch the probe. I've not seen any value over 66,000, so I'll go 66,000 for my final note. And my last note, I'm just going to go for B4. When you finish creating your list um, to fit your particular setup and you want to use it, you have to go down um, to this line here where it goes loaded list, note to prec list, and then where it says E minor, you need to put the name of your list. Mine is called custom. And also here where um, the bottom line where it goes updated tone, loaded list, true, we just need to change that to false. So I'm just going to run the program and then test this out. So. Um, I can hear a bit of crackling there. So maybe um, if I change the minimum probe value um, to something a bit higher, it might work. So I'll just change it to a thousand. So run that. Can't hear any crackling. Yeah, that works pretty well. Another reason for the crackling sound could be that the program doesn't know which note to play. For example, let's say this note at the end here, the voltage reading ranges between 500 and 700, and the note right next to it here ranges between 1000 and 1200. Well, let's just say we tested this note here, and I could say the highest I've seen is 700, so let's just go 1000 just to be safe. Well, we'd have a problem because the voltage here also ranges to 1000, so there's going to be some crossover, and the program at times won't know which note to play, and that's going to result in that weird crackling sound. So a good number to pick for the first note would probably be 800 because it's well within the region of 500 and 700 but isn't going to cross over with the next note. Now for our circuit python code. So I've plugged in my circuit python device and you can see we have a different keyboard here. If you want to know how we manufactured this keyboard then there's another video on that so do check that out if you're interested. However it's not necess a necessity to have something that looks like this. Also you can see we've got a lot more keys um, compared to our previous example where we just had five resistors. I just opened the circuit python code here in Thonny and you can see the code looks relatively similar to the MicroPython code. So the first thing we're going to want to change is our Pro Pin. So this has just got the GPIO pin 26, um, and that's because my Pro Pin is connected to GPIO pin 26. But yours might be connected to a different GPIO pin, 
So change that 26 to the GPIO pin number that your Pro pin is connected to. Next is our speaker pin. Our speaker pin is connected to GPIO pin 18, hence the GP18. But if you're connected to a different GPIO pin, then um, the number will be different. So just change that to your GPIO pin. For us, the reason that our speaker pin is connected to GPIO pin 18 is because we're using the Makeup Eye Pico board here. And we're going to be using this buzzer as a speaker because it can play different frequencies. And you can see this is connected to GP18. Um, the minimum probe value, we've already been through that, that's the same thing. Um, so just again, change that to your minimum probe value for your particular device and setup. Now everything is pretty much the same, but for completeness, we'll just do our own one. So I'll do custom and then we'll follow the same pattern. Hold the probe pin. I've not seen um, any value over 2,500. So that's probably what I'm going to go for. I'll just set the note as um, E4. I'm going to do the same thing for every single note here and come back to you when I'm finished. Um, I changed the first note to being a D and then I've just filled out every single note on my keyboard here. You can see it goes on for quite a while because there's quite a few notes. Now the last thing we need to do if we want to use our new set of notes, custom, is scroll down. Like we showed you earlier, replace this E minor with custom or the name of your set of notes. Um, and then just change this from true to false. And this should work, so let's just run it. I can hear a lot of crackling. So earlier to fix this, we just changed the minimum probe value. So instead of 300, I'm just going to go 1000. And then run it again. That seems to have made a big difference already. And um, let's just see if it works. Yeah, that seems to have gotten rid of the crackling and it works really well. That's all for now. Um, a few notes just before we go. Um, first of all, when we were testing out the voltages on our resistors, um, I said that I just couldn't see any values over 7,000, I think. But when I rewatched it, there were values over 7,000, so sorry about that. Also, when you download the code, it may look a little bit different to what we've shown you today. And that doesn't mean you downloaded it wrong. It's just that we've probably made improvements, like added a few more scales. So the line numbers might not match up to what they say in the video. If you've got any problems at all, just leave a comment asking a question and we've got a great community that will probably answer your question for you before we even get to it. <laughs> we said that you don't need to be able to code for this video. However, if you wanted to know how we coded the code that we've shown you in this video, then we've got a video that goes through step by step how we coded it. So be sure to check that out if you are interested. That's all for now, folks. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.